My name is Tom Clendon and I am an ACCA SBR online lecturer. I help students pass their SBR exams. And if you want me to be your tutor, if you want your work marked and access to my full resources, please, please just get in touch. Now, today's podcast is an advanced one. We're talking about IFRS 2. We're talking about share based payments. And I want to explore how that standard overlaps with and interacts with cash flow and deferred tax. Because in SBR, although we often study in silos, the examiner will often look to test us on more than one accounting standard as it relates to an issue. And I wanted to explore in a little bit of depth two issues here, cash flow and deferred tax as they relate to share based payments. So first of all, a very brief recap about share based payments. I'm talking specifically about the main thrust of the standard, which is where an employer grants, gives, issues to its employees options to subscribe to the company's shares at a fixed price in the future. And it does this as part of remuneration. It does this in order to motivate and reward the staff. Now, the accounting for that is that we measure the value of the option at the grant date, and that doesn't change. And we spread that over the vesting period based on the expected numbers of staff that are going to exercise the option. And that can change over the period, over the vesting period. And the double entry that we look at is that it's, a, it's an expense, so it's a charge against profit. And we're creating equity, so it's debit to equity. Now, I want to consider this in terms of cash flow, in terms of ISA 7. Now, what happens in a cash flow statement is that it starts with the operating activities, the indirect method, and we reconcile the profit yeah, to the cash generated from operating activities. And if you think about it, non-cash expenses are reducing profit, but don't reduce cash, which is why we add them back. So we add back depreciation. You're comfortable in a cash flow, in operating activities, indirect method, adding back a cash flow because it's a non-cash expense. And therefore, you should also be comfortable with adding back equity, settled, share-based payment expenses, staff costs that are options that have been expensed through the P&L because the double entry has been to equity. It's a non-cash expense. In fact, that's one of the advantages of startup companies giving options, granting options to their staff, because it means they can effectively pay them a wage without having to find the money to do so. So year on year on year, during the vesting period, the cash flow statement will show an add back of the share based payment expense. Now, there's another consequence to the cash flow with share based payments, which is around the vesting date. Because if the options are exercised. Yeah, if, if the share price has gone up to ten dollars, but the exercise price is eight dollars and then the option has vested in the employee, then the option has the, the, the employee has the ability to buy the share for eight when it's worth 10 and therefore make an instant profit of two. And so when that happens on the vesting date, when they vested, the company has a cash inflow. Because the employee has to find the eight to subscribe to the company shares when they exercise the option. Now, that cash inflow is because the company has issued shares. So that's a financing activity. So there'd be a positive figure of eight 
yeah, in the financing activities section when the options are exercised. But that happens once, that happens at the end. So there we are, there's the interaction with cash flow. Let's think about the interaction with deferred tax. I say 12. And deferred tax is required to be provided in full on all of our year-end temporary differences. And what we have with ISA 12 and IFRS 2 is something rather peculiar. Because strictly speaking, we don't have a carrying value of an asset or a liability because the option uh, is being charged against profit and is creating equities, creating a credit balance. But nevertheless, there is a deferred tax implication because it affects the timing of when we pay the tax. And the expense that is charged during the vesting period will be disallowed for taxation purposes. There is no underlying cash flow that the taxman can kind of hang on to. So it, it's, it's a disallowed expense for taxation purposes. And there's a nil recognition, therefore. There's a nil tax base associated with it. So we're not getting tax relief now. We're getting tax relief in the future. And therefore, that's creating a deductible temporary difference. And it's therefore establishing a deferred tax asset. And I want you to understand that that when you've got a share-based payment to staff, it does create a temporary difference. It's a disallowed expense. You're getting tax relief in the future. So it's, it's, it's a loss, if you like. It's a deductible temporary difference. And you're creating a deferred tax asset. Now, where it gets a little bit weird is the deferred tax asset is not based upon the actual uh, charge that's gone through the P&L, but it's based on the intrinsic value of the option. And that, that intrinsic value really would have to be given in the question if he wanted you to do any numbers. So it's based on the intrinsic value of the option. Now, as a little throwaway comment, of course, because we're dealing with temporary differences, by the time the option is exercised or lapsed, at that time, yeah, there will be no temporary difference. Yeah, there will be no deferred tax once the option has been exercised because deferred tax is about temporary differences. Wow. So, you know, uh, I was pulling no punches in this podcast. It may be something that you need to listen to again. It's certainly something that is a, a revision issue here because I've tried to look at the interaction of three different accounting standards, share-based payments with cash flow and share-based payments with deferred tax. Thank you very much for listening. If you want further support and assistance with your SBR studies, please don't hesitate to get in touch. You can find me through my website, www.tomclendon.co.uk. You can find me through LinkedIn, you can find me through Instagram, or you can simply directly WhatsApp me on 07725 350 793. That's a UK number. So that is if you're overseas, plus 44 7725 350 793. Thank you very much for listening today.